Hello everyone. Today we're going to work with some uh, foam core. So this is the 3 16 inch foam core that you have in your materials list. It's usually the most common thickness to find anywhere. Um, there's a thinner type that you can use to build smaller scale models, but for uh, this demo we're going to use the 3 16 which is the most readily available one. All right, let's talk about the tools you're going to be using to work with this. So first of all, first and foremost, you're going to need an X-Acto knife. Uh, any type of pen knife is fine as long as you find this particular type of blade. Uh, this blade here is a uh, number 11 blade. It's the most common type you can find. It's very sharp. Be very careful when you handle it. And first of all, let's talk about a good way to handle this knife and to store it. So uh, you don't want to store this uh, with the tip out in your toolbox. Every time you go grab it, there's a risk you're going to cut yourself. So one thing you want to uh, have is either uh, have the cap ready at all times uh, so that you can store this with the cap on. Uh, some people don't like the cap because it's a little loose, so there's several other things you can do. Uh, one thing that I've done in the past that I like a lot is to keep a piece of foam or a piece of foam core or blue foam or something you can uh, sort of stab with uh, your knife and actually use that as a cap. You can insert the uh, sharp end of the knife on, onto a piece of foam and then you can use this as a cap and it's a bit more secure than a cap. Some people use um, small uh, foam balls and other types of sort of squishy things to store the cap. So always be uh, careful of that. Another thing you can do is uh, you can loosen this uh, tip mm -hmm. here and you can um, undo the knife, take the blade out, be very careful when you do this, and you can insert the blade uh, backwards into the holder and then you can tighten it. Uh, this way you end up with uh, something that is not as pointy. There's still somewhat of a sharp edge. Uh, but if you don't have a cap readily available, if you've lost it, this is a good substitute to be able to store this in the toolbox a little bit more, um, more safely. Let's talk about uh, rulers. So this is a uh, stainless steel ruler. It's the type that is very thin and bendy. And uh, it has a cork backing. I like this a lot. It, it's... Uh, it makes it a lot easier for you to cut your foam core if you have this uh, cork backing. Not only does it uh, become a non-slip surface, but it also creates a small gap between your um, ruler and the foam core. And this small gap is going to prevent your blade from getting jammed on the edge of a ruler. Uh, and also that's going to prevent the, the blade from jumping up uh, from the blade and potentially cutting your finger. So it's a good, a good thing to have this type of ruler with a cork backing, and this is what's on your materials list that I provided. Another important um, item to have around is something to create a square edge. You make sure you uh, create um, square edges when you cut something like a box. And uh, during your rectilinear project, you'll be uh, cutting uh, a lot of right angles. So it's important to have some kind of square to actually uh, draw a very straight angle. Now, uh, this tool here is mostly meant for you to be able to draw uh, and lay out your parts on the foam core. It's not really meant for you to uh, use it as a cutting tool because as I said, if you use a ruler that is, you know, has a thick edge like this square uh, and you use your blade against the edge of that, there's a chance that your blade is going to catch the edge so it's going to potentially dig in to the side of the ruler uh, and then, you, then it's going to jump over the ruler and potentially, potentially jump onto one of your fingers. And this is how most accidents happen with X-Acto knives when uh, building something simple out of foam core or cardboard. So make sure that you use your uh, square only to lay out parts, only to draw parts with a pencil onto the foam core and not really as a cutting tool. Always use, whenever possible, your stainless steel ruler to do all kinds of cutting. You can also use a um, box cutter type blade onto foam core, mm -hmm. although box cutters are not, a, not as sharp as uh, X-Acto blades. So uh, it's gonna take uh, some more patience to, to cut these and just be mindful that whenever you want to snap off a new section of this, never use your hand. Um, always use some kind of sturdy tool. I like to use a thick set of pliers uh, and I will actually bring these pliers uh, up to the edge uh, where I'm going to make this 
uh, this section and then I will use the pliers to break off this neatly so I, I don't have my fingers anywhere close to the blade while I'm doing that. Um, then I dispose of the blade in a safe way. Don't throw it uh, into uh, the, your kitchen garbage without maybe putting in some into tissue paper or something that's going to prevent someone from cutting, from cutting their hand uh, with it. So you can also use this type of cutter. Just make sure that you have a nice fresh edge every time you're trying to make a cut. All right, so I'm going to bring uh, a piece of foam core um, to my cutting mat. And it's always important that you uh, have a surface like a cutting mat that's going to prevent you from damaging uh, the table. Um, you have a, a cutting mat also on your materials list. Make sure that you use it. Don't damage uh, the surfaces that are um, underneath. Uh, it'll also help save your knife. So some people don't like to use a cutting mat and they like to cut into the table, but at the same time you're just wasting uh, knife blades because it will dull them very easily. The cutting mat uh, is made out of this rubber type material. It's going to save the blade. So I'm going to lay the ruler down uh, and I'm going to place my fingers um, all, all the way to like halfway uh, into the, the ruler. I don't want my fingers to be sticking out. I don't want my thumb to be in the way of my blade. I don't want my index finger to be in the way of the blade. I want to be a little bit far away from the edge um, while I do this cut. Um, I'm going to place my blade next to the material that I'm cutting and I'm going to do several passes and all the force that I'm applying is always going to be downward. I'm not going to be applying any force towards the ruler. I'm always going to be applying force only downward. So if something happens and my blade jumps, uh, I'm just going to jump downward. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, jump into my hand and uh, stab myself with my exacto knife. I'm always going to go on a downwards motion. So I'm going to do one pass to pierce the surface with medium pressure. I'm going to do another pass to cut all the way through the foam material. And then I'm going to do a third pass to actually cut through the paper in the back. Now I'm going to rotate this so I can section off a piece. I'm going to do the same. One pass to cut the paper, another pass to cut the foam, and a third pass to cut through the paper that is on the back side. So I end up with a pretty clean cut. It's very square. There's no you know, jagged edges on the foam core because I made sure that I use medium even pressure when I'm cutting uh, and I'm doing this you know, three, three cuts to cut through all layers of, of the foam core evenly. So take your time, be patient and you'll end up with a nice clean cut. The next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to make a 45 degree cut so you can make a nice clean right angle with the foam core. So to do this, uh, you want to have uh, your ruler placed. Uh, you might want to trace, actually, uh, with a pencil. So you will trace the line where you would like your panel to end. And then you will trace a second line that is next to it. And this line is going to be about as thick as the material is thick. So let me show you uh, a close-up of these. So I have two lines here. I have one line uh, where I want my panel to um, to end, or where I want my 45 degree bevel to start, and then I'm going to have a line where the panel is going to end. So there's going to be a 45 degree uh, bevel that meets, uh, that helps those two lines meet. So I'm going to show you uh, that in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my ruler on the rightmost innermost line and then to make a 45 degree cut I'm actually uh, going to hold my knife but instead of holding it straight I'm going to hold it at a 45 degree angle against my stainless steel ruler. So I'm going to show you here a close-up of this. I'm going to make that cut while holding the actual exacto knife at a 45 degree angle. I'm going again to cut, make three incisions. Well, I went through on the second time around. So when I actually show you a close-up of this, you'll see I have the 45 degree 
bevel that I did by actually moving my knife at a 45 degree angle. So what I have generated there is I've actually generated two 45 degree cuts. Uh, when you make these cuts meet, you will have a nice sharp corner and the edge is going to be very nice and clean. There's not going to be any edges showing when you actually glue this together. You'll have a nice clean uh, joint that's uh, invisible from the outside. All right, let's talk a little bit about gluing foam core. So there's you know, several options you can use. You can just use uh, regular white glue. You can use something like Elmer's Pro Bond, uh, which works great with foams. Um, obviously those options take uh, a longer time to dry. You have to find a way to hold things together, maybe with you know, blue painter's tape or masking tape. Um, so you need some kind of uh, completed assembly. Like if you're assembling something like a cube, maybe it's a good option because you can put all the parts together and just let it dry and you know, tape it together and let it dry. Uh, if you want to use something a little faster, uh, I would recommend uh, using a hot glue gun. Uh, it's not as clean and maybe requires a little bit more of care when you're doing it. Uh, you don't need any particular type of uh, hot glue gun. Uh, any type of standard type will do. Uh, so we're going to uh, use this for this particular demo. I'm going to uh, try gluing together these two 45 degree cuts that I've made. So you see uh, here how they meet. So I'm going to take the hot glue gun. I'm going to apply um, I'm going to apply a thin bead, and remember the uh, foam core is a thermoplastic, so heat will make it melt. So you want to apply only a small amount of glue, or the actual hot glue will actually start eating at the foam. So what you want to do uh, is you want to apply a thin bead. You know, want to do this in a way that is you know, not too slow, because it, it's, you know, it's very fast to dry up. Uh, and then you're going to meet your other parts together. Generate a nice strong bond. And you might have you might have some um, material squeeze out. Uh, if that's the case, uh, some people like to clean it right away. Uh, I like to actually let it sit and let it dry. If there's uh, small little beads sticking out, and I like to come back and trim that, either by using the X-Acto knife or using uh, a, a pair of really sharp scissors, actually, to you know leave that edge very clean. So we can just let this uh, cool down for a second. A few moments later. All right, so we let it dry for a second and now you can come back with you know, either the X-Acto knife or a very sharp scissor and just trim those very you know, small beads of glue off to actually end up with a nice clean joint on the outside. The next tool on our list that I want to talk about is the rabbit cutter. So the rabbit cutter allows you to cut a notch on your material uh, and that notch lets you actually create a very seamless joint. So when you actually run the rabbit cutter through a piece of material, you end up with this notch that's cut out and it actually leaves a very thin skin on one side. And what this does is then it allows you to actually mount another piece of foam core at a 90 degree angle and have a very clean outside joint. And you know, this is uh, maybe less difficult to perform than the 45 degree cut and it actually has the same results. Now, one thing that is slightly different between these two is uh, when you do your measuring, if you know you want uh, an exact size, an exact width, you need to take into account um, the the size of the notch that is going to get cut out of this particular piece. So let's uh, see if we can do a rabbit cut on a piece of material. The first thing you have to uh, pay attention to when you see your rabbit cutter is you want to make sure that the blades that are inside are well seated. So I'm going to undo this screw that's here. I'm going to take that off and then I'm going to uh, disassemble this and it might require a little bit of force and be careful not to uh, drop the knives as you're doing this. 
So you want to make sure that both of these knives that are here are actually sitting correctly. There's marks there of where, where they should sit. You want to make sure that these are sitting correctly there and they're not jammed uh, and that way your cuts will actually be very precise. So I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to put the bolt in place to secure it again. Right, so now I can um, sort of look in there, see if we can get this thing to uh, to focus. You should be able to see uh, the knife, there we go. The knife blades nicely squared away and, and the small gap there at the bottom, if they're lined up correctly. Now, if everything worked as it should, uh, now you should be able to feed, uh, and you should hold it by you know using this knob right there. You should be able to feed the foam core in this direction. So you should be able to butt the foam core against this edge, and then pull down. You'll see it. You'll feel it hit the knife, and then we will drive this through the foam core, making a cut slowly, even pressure. Don't do it too fast, or you're going to rip the paper, and then you can end up with a nice sharp edge right there. So if you then take this sharp edge here, you can actually make this meet up with with some glue, then you can generate a nice sharp 90 degree edge. Uh, there's usually a small gap there with a 3 16 foam core. Uh, but what I like to do is I like to glue this in place and then I will come back with uh, the knife and just cut out that small edge uh, of the foam cord that is left to generate a perfect edge. Okay, now I'm going to glue my rabbit joint together and now an advantage of the rabbit joint is that you can actually apply two beads of glue to these two walls, both the thin wall and the inner wall of the foam core. So I'm going to apply a small bead of glue to the thin wall and also a small bead of glue to the inner wall. And that way I get a more secure joint. So now I have both sides. Now I'm going to bring my second piece in and I'm going to hold this together. And I usually like to hold these down to the table. You can even use the grid on your cutting mat as a way to make sure that you're holding these at a 90 degree angle. You can also um, create yourself for yourself some kind of jig by using even more foam core. You can use your um, 90 degree uh, right angle ruler to help you uh, figure that out. So we'll just let this thing dry for a second. A few moments later. So my hot glue has cooled down and now I have a nice, very rigid 90 degree joint. And I do have a small ridge that remains from using that particular rabbit, rabbit cutter that I have um, from Foamworks, but that's something you can easily cut away with uh, your X-Acto knife. I'm going to put this here on the table and I'm going to very carefully cut out this um, small edge out with my exacto knife so here i've cut away that small edge that was remaining and i'm left with a pretty clean rabbit joint pretty straight 90 degree angle as well pretty solid So here's a couple more fun tools from Foamworks. Um, this is not in your list, but it's something that's interesting and uh, you can explore this in the future. This is a straight or bevel cutter. So it allows, to do, allows you to do both a straight and a 45 degree cut on your foam core. So if you undo this little button here, you can actually then uh, measure the depth of your cut by moving your knife uh, forward and back. So, I will adjust this to be more inside. 
see if we're cutting through the material. So this block here, and moving this block around will cause you to either do a straight cut or a 45 degree cut. So one neat thing about this cutter is you can actually use this cutter in more, uh, more such like a, you know, like a free form cutter. You can actually go ahead and draw a curve on the foam by using this particular cutter. It's pretty stable and allows you to draw a curve. You can of course do that with something like an X-Acto knife, uh, but it's a bit more dangerous and it doesn't give you as much control as uh, this knife does. So if we now loosen this knob here on the back, and then we flip the block and put it back in, you see that now we have a way to do a 45 degree cut with this particular knife. So we can either do this against a ruler, or we can also do this against a line that we've drawn on the foam core itself. Um, so when you cut a line, with this particular cutter, you'll see we end up with a 45 degree angle there. Now, I think the knife might have needed to poke out just a little bit more, so we might need to actually adjust the depth for this to be a bit longer. Now that we have a 45 degree uh, cut, the, the actual blade length needs to be a little bit longer to get that cut to cut completely through the material. So there we go. Nice, sharp 45 degree angle. And of course you can do this with your X-Acto knife. Uh, this is a an additional tool from Foamworks that you can get uh, that you don't actually need for this particular project, but it's uh, a nice to have. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a very simple curve. So uh, let's say this flat piece, I want to actually curve it in. As you can see, this material doesn't want to actually curve in. If you try to flex it, it's going to just crack at some point. Um, what I've done here is on the inside part, I've marked, and you don't need to mark this so carefully. You can just basically mark um, the distance. Uh, but what I did is I marked a bunch of uh, equidistant lines here on the foam core, and this is going to help me uh, do a bit of a uniform bend. So this is all going to be on the inside. This is a non-visible part of this uh, piece I'm trying to assemble. So I'm going to lay this on the table and I'm going to come back with something that is nice and heavy and has a bit of a thick edge. And in this case, I think our uh, big trusty um, 90 degree angle ruler is going to uh, come in handy. So this is a nice heavy piece of steel. Uh, you can of course find other items that help you do this same operation. So what I do is actually come uh, down hard and just press the foam core here and just create this um, indention with the steel ruler. And I'll do this with every line that I've marked for myself. You might want to use your body weight, if you want to do a nice uh, small diameter, you just want that bend to be nice and deep. Some people like to use a straight ruler and come back with some kind of wooden tool, uh, something that's not very sharp, uh, and then you run it across to do the same procedure. And it helps particularly if you have a very long, in this case I have a very narrow piece to work with, so it's much easier to do that, uh, the bend on a narrow piece. But if you have a very long piece of material, you can actually run uh, a dull tool along this line to make this indention. So as you see, I'm already generating a bit of a curve here, and I can actually pull this in. And particularly if I pull it over uh, another 
part, let's say I've cut uh, the top of this uh, arc that I'm trying to do, you can actually go and glue this along this arc path. So I'll come by and just bend this line by line. You can do a couple of passes just to make this nice and smooth. You can start seeing this piece curve nice and smoothly. Uh, you can come back and push these in again if you feel like the indentions are not deep enough, if they're not doing their job. And if you see the outside, the outside material still is completely smooth, so your um, visible piece, the cosmetic side of your foam cord is still uh, nice and smooth. Here. So I did a, a small rabbit cut on the edge before I started bending this. Um, the idea being that I wanted to see if I can form a cylinder out of foam core for myself by using this technique. So now you can come back and cut a nice circle uh, that is this exact diameter. Uh, and this is you know, still a little pliable, but you can actually apply perfectly rounded caps and generate uh, a perfect cylinder for yourself uh, if you need it, and also just partial arcs and other surfaces that you need to be curved while maintain, maintaining a nice, smooth uh, surface on the outside. Speaking of which, this is another interesting tool from Foamworks. So this is a, a circle cutter, and it's an adjustable radius circle cutter. You can see um, here you will see a knife uh, on the inside, and this knife will rotate as you spin the handle. Uh, and by adjusting this small thumb screw here, you can adjust the uh, radius, or the, sorry, the diameter of the circle that you're cutting here. So as you actually um, move this handle and rotate this around, the knife is going to move deeper and deeper into the foam core that you're cutting. It's actually going to very slowly, you can see this thread, you actually threaded, actually threading this in, um, you can actually, um, go down into the foam core until you've cut through it completely. So let's just give, give this a shot. Okay, so I've got a piece of material here and I'm going to place my cutter, uh, I'm going to back the cutter all the way out. I'm going to place my cutter here in the corner where uh, I have um, just enough material to not waste a lot of material, also enough to hold it uh, very stably in place. There's actually a small marker inside that lets you figure out exactly where the center is. So if you've drawn uh, a center um, or a, a cutting line here, you can actually find it with uh, this particular tool, with a, a pin that resides in the center. So I'm gonna start spinning it, and I'm gonna actually feel as it starts cutting into the material. You can hear it. So I'm gonna keep going until the piece is released. Okay, so I felt it release um, from the material. Let's see if it cut the way through. Sometimes you have to do a little touch up, so let's flip it. Um, see, there's a small uh, piece here that's not fully cut through, so I can come back with a knife and release that. Okay, so I have my uh, circle cut out for a very specific uh, diameter. In my case, it's maybe because I want to create uh, a nicely fitting cap for the cylinder that I am building. All right, so I can create a, a cap of an exact dimension that I can now glue on and create a nice clean foam core cylinder. <laughs> 